2010 Toyota 4Runner. I'm gonna do the rear brakes. So we got a set of pads. I, I did the other side already. A set of the, uh, call them like the sleeves for the calipers. New rotor. Gonna need maybe a rubber mallet, some brake grease, 17 millimeter socket. I'm using half inch uh, for this, along with the breaker bar, torque wrench. This, um, you just need a long rod that's blunt at the end. I'll explain why later. So this is, I'm using it basically just to, to ram this guy into the caliper later. It's a little awkward. Um, this is not a good brush, but I'll get another brush, wire brush. I don't know what these are, but I had a box of bolts, and we use them to thread in here and push or walk the uh, rotor off. Flathead screwdriver might be needed to, to spin the wheel to release the parking brake. This is just because that was a PH3 bolt, so I'm using that for turning these guys, brake spreader, or some C-clamps, and what is this, 21 millimeter socket on, on, at least for me, it's an impact. All right, I'll start by removing the wheel. So these guys are pretty pretty worn down here. I'm gonna take out the caliper bolts and the bracket mounting bolts back here. They're all 17 millimeter. All right, so I got this hooked up to a breaker bar. Just going to uh, loosen up the caliper bolts. And I'll just loosen this real quick too. So those were the caliper bracket bolts. All right, so I loosen these guys up using my just the regular ratchet. Put the bottom one here, pull the top one out. I'm just gonna lift the caliper up and out of the way for now. Be careful with the lines. And I'm trying to still give myself access here. Caliper bracket bolts are out. Pull the bracket off. You gotta remove these four clips and we're gonna pull these guys out and replace them. So these clips just pop out. Two of them had already fallen out. There are two different styles, you know, one's for the left and uh, one's for the right on the new ones. 
So just pay attention when you're putting them on. I mean, you'll figure it out pretty quickly. All I'm going to do here is hit these surfaces with a wire brush where the pad, where this is going to sit um, and where it's going to contact. So I'll do this for a little bit and then um, we'll replace these guys. All right, I wire brush these for a few minutes. They're never going to look perfect unless you really like sandblast them or something. So what I'll do first is this guy here is just like a little cap. I'll pop him out. Probably use it. Oh, there we go. And then this thing comes out pretty easily. Actually, I was putting that guy in upside down. So this this feature here with the the lip, I have to work that in there. There we go. Then on the other end, it's just a lot of a lot of having to manipulate. little button to get in there. Oh, looks like it went right in. This side was a little trickier, kind of had because it goes all the way through. I had to squeeze it and get it in and pull. I wouldn't worry about tearing it because it's the old boot. Pretty robust too. So there's that one. The new one I had to put in at a little bit of an angle to get it started. And then once it's in, I'm using this magnetic pickup just because it's got a pretty good diameter at the end there. It's smooth to push it on through. So I need two hands for this though, so I have to stop the video. Alright, it's mostly through. There we go. Popping these clips on. Tabs always go to the outside. Just kind of work them in. All right, there's a feature here I'm using, it and I'm pushing opposite from there to snap them in. Okay, and then we're going to lube the sections where the contact, this edge, and here you can see this one has got a witness mark here. Have the new pads and these clips, these are the ones that start squealing. Just attach them here, and we start uh, running low on the brakes. Oh, I'm 
we're going to do is put some lube on the back here, on the opposite side. A little more than I meant to there. And then where it's going to slide here. So I'll do the other one and I'll load it into the caliper. Caliper's loaded. I pushed the brake pads out as far as I could because we're going to get them around the, the new rotor here. To get the rotor out, I'm just going to see if it comes out without having to do anything for the parking brake. So I'm just going to tap it. not moving yet um, but there are also these threaded holes that I'll use to help lock off the motor and this is what worked on the other side still feeling some resistance. Let me back these off a little bit. Alright, so the rotor will move a little. So let me see if I can push this down a few more times. Anyway, I'll keep at this and then I'll start the video again. Alright, just remove the master cylinder cap here for the reservoir. And then you gotta hook the uh, this tool up here to compress the caliper back. I actually dropped the, the nut the lug nut in there. It's a little bit longer than my tool allows. Alright, here it is compressed all the way. Alright, I got the caliper and rotor back on, and I'm just going to secure these, these two caliper bolts to 90 foot-pounds. Alright, I greased the caliper pins, and then we're going to drop them on here. Alright, the bolts are in. I'll torque them down to 65 foot-pounds. Alright, these guys got torqued down, and then I will um, put the master cylinder cap back on Colorado all right I'll just uh, mount the wheel here and then torque these down to 85 foot-pounds should be good after that sure. 